everyone. Today is Monday, November 4th. Uh, and I'm Lynette with Charmed Grammy Crochet. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching, sharing, subscribing, liking, all of that wonderful stuff. Um, I have to say, I was a very good yarn dieter over the weekend. Joann's had their like loops and threads. Is that their big twist? That's theirs. On sale for $1.50. That's $2 off a skein. I did not go. I'm so proud of myself. I'm so disappointed with myself at the same time because they had so many pretty colors of that yarn. I saw a couple of yarn hauls and I'm like, don't go, don't go. And I didn't. So I, I deserve a pat on the back for that. Um, so that's a bittersweet. But I do have a couple of things. I got Happy Mail. Um, <laughs> Nancy McDonald, one of my subscribers, who I totally love her. And she, she sent me a pretty little card. Uh, and inside the card, look. It's an elephant's um, bookmark. Isn't it beautiful? Nancy, thank you so very much. You are also, she, she um, indicates that she is also an elephant collector. I have been collecting elephants since I was 10. I have a lot of elephants. I do not have this elephant. Um, oh, it's attached at the bottom. I did not unattach it before. But it is, if you can see how beautiful it is. And it's got the little part that goes inside and outside the book I love it I totally love it um, and elephants are lucky so she's wishing me luck with this and with my YouTube channel so thank you so much Nancy I totally totally love it and it's um, it's surprising when someone can get me an elephant that I don't already have because really I have a lot of them and I imagine if you've been collecting them for a long time you you do as well um, well, I can't get it back in there very quickly, so I will later. I'm going to put it up there. And I got a yarn carousel that I was in, so I'll show you that in a minute, what I took out of there. But first, before I forget, I can't remember who now at this point asked me about the ombre yarns that I just purchased recently, the colors. And I think you wanted the purple color, but um, if it was the brown you were interested in, I think you wanted the purple. Now, the brown is called Coco. It's very pretty. Uh, and the purple one is called look, beautiful. The color, the lighting in here is perfect right now because that's exactly what these look like. Uh, this one is called Violet. I hope that's not backwards for you. I, I, it's backwards what I'm looking at, so hopefully that means it's not backwards for you. I don't know. But it is Violet and it is simply gorgeous. And I did get, I think, both of both of these from AC Moore. But I do believe um, Michaels carries carries this. And I think Walmart carries it as well. I don't know how much they sell them for. Uh, I had a coupon. So I was in the yarn carousel um, that Wanda from Rolling Through Life uh, put out. And the box came today. So I did take just a couple of things. Um... And I don't think I'm allowed to show you what I'm putting back in. So that's really disappointing for me. Uh, but I'll show you what I got. I got one of these uh, Stitch Studio cotton colors. Uh, I totally love this color. Uh, it's the purple, you know, like lavenders. Um, maybe even like that. The inside here might be like a periwinkle blue to lavender. To I have one cake of this. Um, and it, it's a number two fine, a hundred percent cotton, a thousand ninety three yards. Um, but I don't think one cake is going to be enough to make something for me. Um, particularly if I want to do them to want to do it together to make it a little bit thicker. I've really not worked maybe at all with a two weight yarn. Probably the closest I've come is Ball in a Shaw, which they say is four weight, but let's face it, that stuff's really thin. <laughs> um, 
the majority of it is you know it's kind of roving and it's like some thicker parts but the majority of that is pretty thin yarn and that like took forever to work up and this is pretty thin as well so now i have two of this color which is one of the favorite colors that i had there um so i'm real excited about that and then i also took these um unforgettable waves and there's three skeins of those in the color parade i have unforgettable but i do not have this color so now i do so this box will be passed on i believe it goes back to you wanda um i did send you an email to request the information because there's nothing indicating who it goes to next and if you did send out emails on where it goes and what their address is i don't have that anymore or i never got it um and i haven't really seen anybody doing unboxings on it so uh i was like even getting nervous about getting it and then it came today so yay um, so that was fun. That was two funs in the mail. Um, and then I did have a couple of um, finished objects to talk about. One of them is two in one. So here we go. I used this loom uh, and made my first loom little baby hat. I, I did put a picture on my Facebook page today. I think of it. I think this is a 24 peg loom. Um, and it didn't take long and I made a little brim, um, like just folded over and connected it while I was doing it. The very little directions that came with the loom, um, said to do that <laughs> if you wanted to, to keep it from rolling. So I did, I, I didn't bring the yarn. I used, um, I put a pom-pom on it and I used these pom-pom makers which also really have not very good directions. I got these at AC Moore, and I don't know if they're a Stitch Studio brand. I probably, um, and there's two in the, in the set. I showed them when I got them. Um, this, and then it came with this bigger one. So I used a little one because I was just making a baby hat. And the directions on how to use this were not all that great. Uh, it pretty much says, and this is what I did partially. It says that you take these and you put the, um, there's a knobby side on each one. So you put the two not knobby sides, or knobby side with a not knobby, with a whole side. And that gives you the space in the middle. And then it says wrap your yarn thickly around this end and then around this side, close it, latch it, because there's little latches to hold the sides together. Um, then you cut along here and you put a long string and you pull. Well, I'm making a baby hat and this is the smallest one that I have. And I, it doesn't tell you how many, now I like times to go around and I'm thinking, this is going to be a huge friggin' pom-pom. If, if I have to fill in, like, this whole center section, that's going to be like a skinny yarn. It's only going on a baby's hat. <laughs> they won't be able to pick his head up. <laughs> so, I, I was wrapping it in the car, and I, with my husband was driving, and I'm like, we're discussing this. <laughs> Which, you know, he doesn't have any more of an idea how to make a pom-pom than I do, but... I have a better idea because I did make a pom-pom before, just never with a pom-pom maker. I've made a pom-pom where I've wrapped it, you know, just around like a piece of cardboard. And the instructions, which a YouTube video like forever ago, said like wrap it like 60 times. So I'm wrapping this and wrapping and wrapping and my arm's getting tired. I'm like, there is no way that I'm wrapping this whole thing and sticking it on this baby hat. So I only did half. I only wrapped like this section and then Ariana my little granddaughter helped me we were going to make it together and so she started cutting as I held it because I thought she would enjoy that and the yarn starts falling out which is what I was really afraid of so then we had to hold it this way and hold it this way while she cut and I don't know that I the bottom line is I'm not really sure that I like the idea of the pom-pom maker <laughs> I think this was 
harder than just wrapping it around a piece of cardboard. Um, anyway, but that is what the instructions said to do. So that is halfway what I did. And I keep them in this little knit crate box that I got, or bag that I got, um, with my first knit crate ever. So that was kind of cute. Anyway, this is the finished product. This is the little baby hat, and it's very small. Uh, and the pom-pom is probably almost as big as the hat, which I think makes it really cute. I think it will, you know, stretch over a newborn head. and But it's got a lot of holes in it when you stretch it. So the yarn isn't real thin. It's like a thin four or a light or a thick three. Um, it's yarn that I get from that store marks. And I did this just as a test model um, for my, you know, first ever loom. So I was doing it as a test model to go with the baby blanket. Um, but I really want to make the baby, I want to make the baby a hat that matches the blanket out of the blanket yarn when I get that done. Um, so my question is, uh, when you loom, do you use a three weight yarn? Because, like, it's really thin. Um, if this was a hat for an adult, like, I don't think it's going to keep you warm in the dead of winter if you live in a cold state, but um, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe you do the whole thing and flip it over. Cause so I had like this edge and it, when it was curling and it says in the directions to avoid the curl, like at some point you take what's coming out of the loom down here and you put it up over and then crochet and then or uh, add your loopies around and take them off and so then it like started over and I had to create again so but I'm probably not making any sense if you loom knit you probably have a clue what I'm talking about and I'm sure that it could be explained much better <laughs> but anyway and so that I did that and is so is that how you generally loom a, a hat then you would do it and like let it all come out until it's like the length you want and then fold it in half I don't know um or am I or is the yarn just too thin or should I have a different loom that's like closer together little spikies I don't know what the little spikies are called I wasn't unhappy with this by any means but I'm thinking, you know, my husband, if I'm going to like try to loom knit a hat for my husband, I mean, obviously I use the bigger loom, but it's got bigger spaces. So do I need to use like a chunky yarn if you're going to loom knit hats? Um, it gets cold here in the dead of winter and he's out there and the sun's not even up yet. So it's even colder. Um, so if I'm going to make him hats, do I need to use that really chunky thick yarn? Um, like this, which wouldn't this be a really pretty Christmas hat? Because it's got the sparkle in it. Ooh. Chloe would love that. Actually, I have to say, Chloe picked out this yarn. She wanted me to make a scarf. This was the first year that I was crocheting, and I tried to make a scarf. That scarf that was going around uh, was the three buttons here, and it had the three braids. And she went on YouTube and she said, Grammy, make me this out of this yarn. And we were yarn shopping. And so she bought the Cincinnati, well, I bought the Cincinnati Red um, Lion Brand Hotel USA. And I got in that, and I started making that, that um, scarf. And I got about... I don't know, two loops in, and the thing was like this big around, and my holes in my yarn was almost all gone. I'm like, this is not working. So then I, I bought like a four weight yarn and made it with a hat and gloves, and she totally loves it. I just did a, you know, this much, like one braid around part of it uh, to make her a, a hat with. And I would add it, I would add the picture, because I do have a picture of it, and I would add a picture, but I don't know how. So there we go. I can't do that. Um, but I'll put one on my Facebook page. So if you want to see what that looked like, it was really pretty. And it's the only pair of mittens I ever made in my life. And the mittens killed me. I spent more time making those mittens 
and screwing them up and starting over and more frogging than you should ever do on any pair of mittens. Um, I swore I will never make another pair of mittens again. <laughs> I probably will. I'm more experienced now. I probably, I could do it better, but I was having a hard time. Um, so those are the only mittens I have ever made thus far. So, okay. So now we went through the loom. We went through the hat. Um, so the, my two finished objects were the pom-pom and the hat. But I do really want to know if you have any answers on just use thicker yarn, two strands of yarn if you're using thin yarn, or is it just supposed to be like that? I don't think it's just supposed to be like that. Did I do something wrong? Do I have the wrong stitch? I mean, I just did, um, you tie it to the little knob on the side and then you just go from behind and wrap around, behind and wrap around, behind and wrap around, behind and wrap around in a circle all the way around and then take off the reverse way. Um, so two strands of yarn would probably work out well too, huh? Okay, so... Uh, do you want to see the blanket? It's not done yet. I cheat. I cheated. I'm going to show you. I am cheating on it. So because it was just, the stitch is beautiful. I totally love the stitch. So I'm going to show it to you upside down. It's still attached to the cake. So we'll put that on the floor. So here's the stitch. And I totally love it. It's really nice takes a lot of yarn and a lot of time so I did all these rows of bobbles to here and completed the pattern three times and it took me like two evenings and I'm not the fastest crocheter in the word world I will admit um but I, I thought I crocheted faster than that so then I decided and I was getting afraid because I went through almost two skeins of yarn and I think I had five so I went through almost two skeins of yarn to do that. And I'm like, I'm not going to have enough yarn. And this is taking forever. I need to get it done. So then I did another whole skein of yarn. Went from here down to here of just double crochet. And I did that in an evening. And now I'm back to, I'm going to do the pattern three more times. Um, I have two skeins of little, uh, I have maybe, I've gone through three skeins. I'm on my fourth skein. Uh, and I am starting this pattern the second time. Um, so all in all, the blanket I think will be, this is the, really the length this way. So if I add two more, it'll come out to about here. Um, I think on the crochet crowd, they said they did 60, 60 rows. Um, and like every other row is a single crochet, but it still counts as a row. So I will have more than 60 rows when this is done. Um, and that's, that's going to be the pattern. It's going to be what happens because that's the yarn that I have. And I think, I think, I'm hoping anyway, that I will still have enough yarn to make a, a hat out of this yarn. I mean, tragedy, I could go buy more yarn. Um, I, I don't think that this is a discontinued color or anything. So, um, worst comes to worst, I can just go buy more yarn. I really don't want to go buy more yarn. Uh, I mean, if I go there to buy that one skein of yarn, you know I'm going to buy more yarn. So, that doesn't, it's too tempting when you're on a yarn diet to go into the yarn store. You know what I mean? So I don't want to do that. Um, but you never know. So I think, I'm hoping that by tomorrow evening, by the time I go to bed, I will have that thing done. Um, then I found out that there's another baby shower this week. Um, I wasn't invited, but it's uh, someone that I would like to give a gift to. So I don't know that I'm going to be able to crochet anything and get it to them by this weekend. And I'm really kind of disappointed by that because I would really love to give them something crocheted. And we don't know what the baby is because they're keeping it a secret. Uh, they don't know. They didn't want to know, which I think is so totally awesome. Um, so I think I might practice and do 
a hat and then buy some other things. If I knew it was a boy, I would just give this blanket for this coming up shower and make something, make another blanket for the shower that I'm making for this baby. Because that one's in two weeks and this one's this week. <laughs> um, but I can't get blue to a, under, a, you know, what if it's a girl? Then what? That would just be bad. So we're not going to do that. Um, but I think white and yellow. Uh, I have some. Oh, no, that's blue. Mm -hmm. I think I have some really pretty baby neutral. Baby yeah. What about this? This would make pretty baby hats. This is ice cream from Lion Brand. Ice cream sprinkles in rainbow. Would you put that on a baby boy if it's got blue in it? I mean pink in it? I know you could put it on a baby girl. Maybe that's not as gender neutral as I thought. I don't know. I'm sure I have something that'll work. <laughs> Um, oh, I have some fuzzy yarn. Would fuzzy yarn make a nice loom hat? Like this? What do you think? Mint green. That can go boy or girl. And I have fuzzy yarn over there that could go boy or girl. Ooh, that's what I'm going to do. This is for uh, Forever Style from uh, um, Hobby Lobby. Yipper. Pink, um, I have in the mint and in the cream. That's very neutral. Oh, I'm loving it. And you know what? The baby's not, even if they don't have the gift by the shower, as long as it's by the time the baby comes, right? I'm liking it. Okay. That's all I, that's all the news I have for you today. Um, and it, uh, as I said, if you have any loom information, help. I would be more than happy to take any advice and knowledge that you all have. So thanks for watching, sharing, subscribing, and being part of my yarn journey. Happy hooking. See you next time.